What's up everybody, Vitrashan here, welcome back to yet another very exciting video. So two days back I ran a story on my Instagram asking which photographer do you all want me to replicate their editing style on on my next video. So since most of you all had voted up for Peter McKinnon, so today I thought of sharing with you all on how to edit like him. So without any further ado, let's jump right in. Oh wait, before that let's put the intro. Welcome back guys, my name is Vitrushan and I'm a travel and landscape photographer from Sri Lanka right now residing in this beautiful country of Latvia. So if you're new to the channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button and check out my previous video on Lightroom uh, in case if you're not familiar with Lightroom and all the interface and stuff because you will be heavily relying on it throughout this video. So uh, before we jump right into the actual tutorial, I want to uh, just uh, give you all a small tip. So uh, since most of you have voted for Peter Mackey, then let's start analyzing his photos. So most of Peter's photos uh, stays uh, true to its color. They all have natural colors and then uh, as you can see all of them always have this kind of a winter feel, a cold feel to their photos. So before starting to edit like Peter Mackey, we have to shoot like him, which is the biggest obstacle. So I had tried gathering up few photos which are very close to his shooting style. So most of the time he shoots in his DSLR more than the drone, if I'm not wrong. And then of course he owns a 1DX Mark II, so we all know what type of quality uh, shots he'll be taking. So it's quite hard to achieve the colors he does, but then yet we can get, go as close as possible. So let's start analyzing his uh, photos a little bit. So you can always see that most of his photos have very strong contrast and his uh, blacks are very strong. They are almost clipped. And then uh, he always likes to go have blue dominating his photos. Like it's not exactly blue but in more of an aqua color. So you can find it in almost all his photos. And of course there's always a lot of snow in his photos. I mean in, at least in his recent ones. So let's... Uh, so right now I have few photos uh checked up on my lightroom so we'll try to uh, get this close to one of these as much as we can so i kind of like this photo a lot because this kind of uh what do you say recalls this shot it's almost kind of the same both have trees and they are filled with snow so let's see how much close we can get to this so uh, most of his photos are shot on uh, portrait orientation in 4 by 5 ratio. So we'll do that as well. We'll go to crop. We'll give the ratio to 4 by 5. And then we'll compose the photo to somewhere like this. And it probably straighten it out a little bit like this. Yes, perfect. And then to start things off, let's adjust the white balance. So in this, we might make it a little bit warmer since I feel that it's a bit too cold. Maybe somewhere around 8000 would be fine or maybe 7900. And then let's increase the tint a little bit, maybe to 9. So now that removed a little bit of the blue tones in this photo and then the exposure seems okay. So let's increase up the contrast. Uh, let's get the contrast to somewhere around 45 maybe 40s yeah so you can see that it's at least even already it starts to look good and then uh, let's go to the highlight the highlights let's drop it down so we can see more of the sky to somewhere around minus 50 maybe and then let's open up the shadows maybe around 60 looks good and then the whites let's increase it to somewhere around five maybe and then let's bring down the blacks yes 36 looks good so we can always see the difference we are getting somewhere close and then now uh, let's increase the clarity so also do remember that most of peter's photos are very sharp they look staggeringly sharp and then 
they look crisp as you can see in most of his shots so one more thing which you have to remember when we increase the clarity is that uh, it also takes away the colors from the photo so we might have to edit again later and also I might dehaze it a little bit as well maybe around this so for now I might maybe reduce down the vibrance to somewhere around minus 14 let's see before after and also to see the before and after all you have to do is press the key that is above the enter the vertical bar and then next let's go to the tone curve so we'll give we'll create a basic s curve on this that is by creating a midpoint and creating a point over here and creating a point over here and then you create a s something like this so what this basically does is that the portions which are quite dark and the portions which are quite bright it makes it more extreme the quite bright areas are more brighter and the quite dark areas are more darker and these are the dark most portions so none of peter's photos have clipped blacks so we'll keep the blacks as they are and then let's jump right into hsl in hsl uh, first and foremost let's change the color of the aqua it might bring it down to somewhere on minus 70s and then maybe the blue as well to minus 20s on the leathers and then no maybe I'll leave the blue as it is and then let's remove the blue saturation from this little bit and the acquire as well since there are no greens, yellows, magenta or purple we don't have to really tinker with any of them so most of them we are just playing around with the blues and aqua so somewhere around this looks good and then as I said before most of Peter's photos are extremely sharp so let's sharpen the hell out of it since this was a moving shot you won't you won't see that the trees edges are very uh, crispy so we'll make it as sharp as possible and in masking we'll press down the alt key and then if you pull up we'll see which are the areas that selected so we'll just go to the edges of the tree to somewhere around this and then we'll click check these two and then the lens shot was on camera on. and I might as well no and then let's come down to color calibration in this I might increase the red channel a little bit maybe around 31 30 or maybe 36 Then I might drop down the green saturation a bit somewhere around 30 minus 33, 36 and then I might uh, bring down the blues primary saturation to minus 10 maybe so the difference they make is quite small but then uh, they do change the overall color of the photo oh, I also feel the sky looks too exposed so we might drop down the gradient and reduce down the exposure maybe we'll do the same with the bottom as well also do remember if you double click on the effect tab it will reset all the parameters back to the zero or their default values So you can now see that we had already uh, gone close to his photography style somewhere around this since this photo is lacking a little bit of yellows we can't really show it out but then you get the idea yeah 
So we'll make a preset out of it. So I've already created a preset with the same settings called Peter McKinnon and then let's try it on a different photo. Let's take this photo for an example. Let's do the same thing. We'll crop the photo to 4 by 5 ratio. And let's try with the preset. Yep. Doesn't it look good? Let's try with another one more photo. So since this photo is a little bit too uh, underexposed, let's bring up the exposure a little bit up. And then I might reduce down the gradient tools exposure a bit. And I might as well change the hue color of it, hue color of the blue a little bit as well. Yes, perfect. So there's one more photo I have over here, which for now on this photo, the difference is it's a drone shot. So for a drone shot, it's usually uh, the way we change colors differ a little bit. And also this has a lake in between, which most of uh, Peter's shot have. But the difference is that Peter shoots most of these photos in a DSLR and while I've shot this in a drone. So the quality is far lower. Anyways, we'll try doing our best. So as I said, the first thing we do is we crop the photo to 4 by 5 ratio. And then we start doing the same thing as before. In this photo, I might go a little bit more warmer tones. Maybe somewhere around 8000 or maybe 8200. And then I might increase the tint as well to, or maybe the tint looks fine. And I might increase the exposure a little bit, maybe around 60s. And then, as usual, we'll pump up the contrast. And now, let's drop down the shadows a bit. And open up the, sorry, drop down the highlights and let's open up the shadows a bit. Maybe around this. Don't worry, it might look a bit too hazy now, but then we'll fix it. And then we'll drop down the whites as well. And we'll drop down the blacks. Like a lot. So I might speed this up a little bit. So we'll dehaze it a little bit more. And we'll increase the clarity a bit more. And on this, I might increase the vibrance to a little bit higher. And we'll do the same tone curve. And then we'll jump down to here saturation and luminance so first let's go to the saturation uh, in this I might increase the orange a little bit or maybe a lot and then the yellows as well and then the greens a bit and then the aqua to around this and maybe drop down the blues a little bit and also I might drop down the magenta and the purple. With the hue, maybe I would drop down the green hue a bit. And maybe increase the aqua a bit. And as previously stated, we'll make it as sharp as possible. Then we'll go down to camera calibration and then maybe we make it a little bit more greener then we'll increase the reds primary colors maybe I'll also reduce this hue and then I might reduce down this and then maybe this a little bit as well somewhere around this so 
so you can see it's all, it already starts to look good so now we'll add this local adjustments so we'll darken these areas and over here as well maybe it's a bit too strong maybe I'll go for minus 0.5 or maybe 3 I might also add a bit of a hazy effect from over here So that's it from me guys hope you learned anything new from this tutorial and as I said to start editing like Peter McKinnon we have to first start shooting like him which is the tough part so anyways we tried going close to it as much as we could and then I hope you understood few of the uh, basic adjustments which we did and how I did it and why we did it so uh, if you enjoyed this video make sure to like and drop a comment and then state in the comment on which photograph I should replicate their style on next. So until then, see you on the next video. Thank you for watching.